Python is a programming language created by Guido van Rossum in 1991. It is a very popular language used in many applications. The main use case of Python is in data science, machine learning and artificial intelligence. The syntax of the language is so easy. So in this video, you can learn the basics of Python in minutes. First, go to the browser and search for Python. In the download section, click on download and then install it. After setting it up, go to the terminal and type Python. If something like this comes, then the setup is successful. Now to write the code, go and download VS Code for the required operating system. Open VS Code and go to the extension section. Install the Python language pack. Now let's learn Python programming. Variables and data types. Variables are used to store data with a name and then later on we can access the data using the name that we gave to it. There are four fundamental data types in Python. They are integers, floating point and booleans and also strings. Strings store text in either single or double quote. Integers store integers. Float stores numbers with decimal point and bool is either true or false. In Python, while declaring a variable, we need not specify the data type. For example, here we created four variables, one of each basic data type. To print the data stored in the variables in the console, use the print statement. To run the code, go to the terminal and run Python followed by the name of the file with full extension. Or you can just click on the run button in the top right corner. Now let's focus on arithmetic operations. To add two numbers, we use the plus sign, minus sign for subtraction, star for multiplication, slash for division, and percentage sign for modulus, which finds the remainder of division. For example, here we store the result of 183 plus 32 in the variable addition result. Then we create two variables and store numbers in both of them. Now we have a new variable called subtraction result is created and we put number one minus number two in it. We can also directly pass in the operator in the print statement. Let's learn to format a string and then print. Earlier we have created two variables, one for name and one for age. Now let's print a sentence using the variables. To combine variables with text, we can use comma sign. There is a better method called a string. Put f in the bracket and then double quote. Inside that use basic text and to use variables, put them inside curly braces. Now that we have learned about variables, data types and print statement, let's get further and learn to get user input in Python. For that, we use the input statement and pass in the text or the question inside the parentheses. Now when we run the code, the console is waiting for us to enter the text. After entering, click on the enter key and now the value is stored in the name variable. Next is integer input. If you use the input keyword, then the language expects a string or a text. So even if we enter a number, it will be in text format or it will be like putting a number in double quotes. In this case, if we try to add the age with a number, then there will be an error as we can't add a string and a number. To solve this problem, we use the int keyword. Wrap the input statement inside the int keyword to convert the value to an integer. Similarly, for boolean or true or false input, we wrap the input statement in bool keyword. Next is conditional statement or if statement to check for a condition and execute different code based on the result. For example, here I created a variable called eligible and set it to true. I want to print you are eligible if eligible is true and then print not eligible if it is false. So in that case, we use the if keyword and then name of the variable. This checks whether eligible is true and prints the result. Next is some basic comparisons using the less than, greater than, equal to, less than or equal to, etc. We can also combine multiple comparisons in single if statement using and, and, or. And will evaluate to true only if both the conditions are met and or will evaluate to true if either one of or or both the conditions are met. Similarly, we can use the not keyword to create conditions like if A is true and B is not true. We want to check whether two values are equal and we use two equal to signs as a single equal to sign is used for assigning value to variable. Also for not equal to, we can use an exclamation mark and then an equal to sign. Next is loops. What if we want to repeat an action hundreds or even thousands of times? In such cases, we use loops. There are two types of loops in Python. They are for loops and while loops. Let's try to print from 1 to 10 using the for loop. We use for i in range 10 print i. When the loop starts, the value of i will be 0 and then on each iteration, the value increases by 1 and finally when it gets, gets to 10, the loop stops. Similarly, while loop can be used for the same. First we set count is equal to 0 and while count is less than 10 we print count and in the end of the loop add 1 to the count variable using count plus equal to 1. 
similarly if you want to reduce the value you can use count minus equal to value and similarly for multiplication division and modulus next is iterating from a start value to an end value let's print from 10 to 15 for instance for that we use the same for loop but instead we pass in 10 and 15 10 is the start value and 15 the end next is the break and continue keywords the break keyword is used to get out of a loop for instance in this for loop we break then we break when i is equal to 5 as we said break when i is equal to 5 the loop prints only until 4 next is continue when we use continue the loop gets to beginning that is it skips that specific iteration and start the next one for example in this loop we call continue when i is equal to 2 4 and 6 so in this case it prints from 0 to 9 excluding 2 4 and 6 next is infinite loops this loop runs as long as the program is running for example we set running to true and as long as it is true we print running list tuple and dictionary what if we want to store a lot of data in that case creating separate variables for each will be difficult in such a case we can create list tuples and dictionaries list can be created using square bracket for example in this list we store the name of some fruits and when we and then we can also print it another one is tuple which is created using parentheses the difference between tuple and list is that in tuple we can't change any value but in list we can change the values next is dictionary which shows data in key value pairs the keys and values are put in curly braces it is like json format to access specific items of list we use index in the print statement pass in the name of the list and in square bracket put the index the first item of the list has index 0 second has 1 and so on the same way we can access items of tuple also to access specific value of a dictionary we use the key name to loop through a list we can use for loop for example in this code we loop through the list one and access each item using the variable name item and print it the same thing can be done for tuple also next is looping through dictionary to print all the keys we can use for key in dictionary dot keys then print keys to print all the values we can use for value in dictionary dot values print value and to access all the keys and values using different variables we can use for key comma value in different in dictionary dot items print key and value now let's look at changing the value of an item in a list and dictionary we can change the value of an item with index 0 using this syntax we can also change the value of a key in a dictionary using this syntax next we will look at some operations on list let's add new item to list remove items using both index and also the value to add a new item to the end of a list we can use append function on the list we can remove an item using value using the remove function and passing in the value in the parenthesis we can also remove an item using its index using the pop function just pass in the index of that specific value in the parenthesis next is reading from and writing to files first create a text file with the text now in the python file we can open the text file using r which stands for read we access the file using the variable name file and store its content in the content variable then we print it now if we want to print each line separately we can create a new list and in the file opening part we will loop through the file and append it to the lines list so each list will be a specific element of the array or the list that we created next is writing to files let's use a new file called output.txt if it doesn't exist then when we run the code then it will be created we use w instead of r which stands for write then we call file.write and pass in the text now the text is added to the output.txt if we run the code again with some different text then the original text will be removed and new will new one will be added if you want to append new text we use instead of w a which stands for append and then we run the code and now the new text is also added to the existing text in the output.txt next is function in some cases we'll have to repeat the same code and writing the same code multiple times make the code longer and time consuming so in such cases we can use something called function which allow us to give a name for a set of instructions for instance let's create a function called print hello we start with the defined keyword or def keyword and then the name of the function inside the function after an indentation we call print hello world now to call the function just type the name of the function and a pair of parentheses for some function we will need to pass in some data in order to get the required output for example in the case of a function to add two numbers we will need to get the input of two numbers so in such cases we use arguments 
that is the values that are to be passed to a function this is a simple example of a function with two arguments while calling the function pass in two or in when calling the function pass in two values or variables to get the output in most of the cases we don't want to print the result instead we need to store the result in a variable to do that we use the return keyword in the same function instead of printing the result we store it in a variable and then print it now store the function result to a variable using this syntax and now let's print the add result and get the same result as before now we are going to look at some modules there are many files in which useful functions are already written which we can use in our project we import a file using the import keyword here we import the math module in this module there are many math functions and also some constants for instance math.py gives the value of pi to find the cos sine tan etc of any angle we use math.cos math.sin etc and pass in the angle in radian measure next is the random module which helps to get a random value between two numbers import random and use random.randit and pass in the first and last limit as the two arguments for instance this will give us random value another important module is the time module which can be used for halting the execution for some time or sleeping for some time let's see an example of using time.sleep in this code we first print hello world and after a sleeping or halting for two seconds print by world if you want to master web development in python you can learn it using the link to the video in the description below in which i teach you how to create a simple youtube clone in python thank you